Hello Joseph, thanks for taking part in our Physician Perspective series. So what inspired you to become a physician? So my background was really in engineering as an undergraduate student, and I got really drawn into the medical sciences, as, particularly as I got involved in research. And as I saw how the landscape of medicine was changing, particularly in areas like cancer research, uh, I was really drawn to the opportunity to apply, uh, you know, sort of that scientific mind, if you will, to solve medical problems. And, um, and then I ended up also meeting my wife in college, so we both um, pursued the medical track and both went to medical school and found that there were many opportunities to use our skill sets, our education, our training uh, in a variety of ways. And so that, that was really the background. I mean, I think, you know, growing up as a child, uh, I, it was not on my radar. I, I was not one of those people who uh, grew up always wanting to be a doctor, but it was, you know, through just that process during college where I, I realized my interest in the field of medicine. You're also known as an entrepreneur in both digital and social media. Could you tell us a bit about your current projects, please? Sure. So one of the projects, well, first of all, you know, um, I'm actually responsible for running a small business, and that business is focused on providing continuing medical education, or CME, to physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, pharmacists, you know, other healthcare professionals as well as uh, physicians. And much of the education that we deliver today is delivered online, and it's delivered through a variety of different formats, including mobile devices and short segments um, on, uh, that use interactive formats. So, you know, my day job and my prime responsibility is running this company and creating new and innovative formats that are relevant, that are going to engage uh, busy practitioners and provide them with the most relevant information that's going to help them transform their clinical practice and really improve patient care. And so outside of that sort of day job, if you will, I stay very connected with what's happening in the mobile health space, in the telemedicine space, and what's happening in social media and health information technology. So you'll see me often attending conferences and speaking at conferences, moderating panels, because I find myself very interested in what's happening in that whole digital realm. And many of what's, uh, many of the um, the, the trends, if you will, that have happened via mobile health and telemedicine, I find are also very, very applicable and relevant in the continuing education field because busy doctors need to now know how to use mobile technologies to interact with their patients, for instance, or they need to understand how telemedicine can help them improve care depending on where they are. So, um, so those are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm involved in some projects just looking at ways to tie those pieces into medical education. Uh, I also do a lot of blogging and speaking on those topics, whether it relates to continuing education or not, if it's going to really improve health care. And, um, and I'm also involved in uh, being a part of several advisory boards. So one of the advisory boards, medical advisory boards that I'm a part of, is for a social media company called Doximity, which is a social network for U.S.-based physicians, although they are starting or they are exploring some international things as well, but primarily for U.S.-based physicians to become uh, a LinkedIn, if you will, a professional directory of doctors, but also to provide a secure, encrypted uh, channel where doctors can communicate with one another and talk not just socially, but really to, to talk about patients and patient care and to have that kind of online platform where they can improve that care coordination and collaborate. So it's been a very um, interesting journey to just see all the different things happening in the digital space and uh, to see how that can uh, ultimately be used to improve patient care. In your opinion, how can pharma best connect with physicians? So here in the United States, it's becoming harder and harder for pharmaceutical representatives to get in front of uh, physicians to tell them about their new products, to educate them about um, ongoing research or recent clinical studies. Much of that has uh, moved into the online space, you know, the e-detailing, if you will. Uh, but we still know that there are many physicians who are not as receptive, they're not as open to spending that kind of time with pharmaceutical representatives. So uh, I think in today's world where time is of the essence and as, as physicians get busier and busier, uh, I think the best way for pharma to really connect is to provide resources that are going to be uh, meaningful and that's going to be relevant for the busy doc. So that, 
the resource might be some kind of an educational resource or tool, uh, a tool that they can use in their practice. Uh, we've seen a number of pharmaceutical companies develop apps, for instance, mobile apps, uh, that are either dosing calculators or algorithms. Uh, and so they can help provide the sponsorship or the funding uh, to provide these tools at the tips of busy doctors. You know, it might be clinical practice guidelines and algorithm-based um, you know, tools or, or calculators, if you will. Uh, the other big need right now, particularly in this country, is around um, the, the payment gap, if you will, where uh, patients cannot pay for their drugs, and so they have that limited access. And so there are voucher programs and coupons and other kinds of things that, once again, doctors are eager to provide their patients, but often it's either cumbersome or they don't know about them or they have a hard time providing that kind of information to their patients. So how if pharmaceutical companies can improve that kind of communication, provide those kinds of tools, that, number one, will help doctors at that point of care, and number two, somehow close that gap so that more patients can have access to drugs, I think those would be uh, the biggest areas where they could really benefit uh, physicians. And in what ways can social media benefit the healthcare industry? So social media is really evolving, and one of the big areas is what I described earlier with platforms similar to Doximity and others like it that allow physicians who normally are not corresponding with uh, you know, open email or text messaging because those are not secure platforms, but you know, providing a, a way where doctors can collaborate with one another uh, and talk about a patient. So now the medical oncologist can talk with the surgeon, they can talk with the radiation oncologist and the pathologist, but they can have that discussion online and really improve that care coordination in the process. And I, there are social media platforms that are closed, that are encrypted, that are secure and private that allow that. Uh, there are health systems, for instance, that are leveraging some of these enterprise-level social platforms, uh, such as Yammer and others, that, are, um, that they're building just within their own health system. Uh, so that's another example. And then I think the other big area is among patients. You know, many patients are sharing their stories or openly talking about what they're going through, and it's helping other patients understand, um, you know, their options in terms of uh, disease management. It's providing healthcare professionals insights on what these patients are going through and sharing. And so on the patient end, and then, of course, there are communities and platforms like patients like me and others like that that are even bringing a research element to it all where you can now actually get research on rare diseases because you've got all these patients from around the world uh, sharing their information, providing input, and providing healthcare professionals with access to information that we never had before. Uh, but I think really on that sort of basic level, if patients are willing to engage with each other and share their stories and learn from one another and also support each other, it really does bring community and it brings value to those patients. You regularly speak nationally about mobile health. How important do you think it is for both physicians and pharma to keep up with the latest technology? I think particularly in the mobile health space, the technology is evolving so rapidly uh, almost everyone um, in, uh, who's a medical professional now has access to uh, a smartphone or a, a tablet device. And these tools, I think, are really changing the way that we're able to deliver health care, whether you live in a uh, modernized country or whether you live in an area that's still underdeveloped. And I think it's, it's really important to understand how these tools can not only improve the efficiencies of care, but also improve the way that uh, healthcare professionals and patients are communicating and uh, reduce medical errors, reduce diagnostic errors. Um, so what's exciting, I think, to see here in the United States as well as in other developing countries is that you know, mobile uh, technology uh, adoption is not just really high among physicians and nurses, but also among many patients. And so these patients want... Uh, tools, they want access, they want to be able to communicate with their providers using these kinds of platforms. They want that sort of convenience, if you will. Uh, they're using their camera to take photos of a rash and sending that so that now, instead of describing the rash by saying it's pink, it's raised, it's kind of itchy, they can just show them uh, right away. 
and, uh, and they can show progress. So it's really improving that kind of care delivery among those who understand the technology and who know how to use it. And certainly in developing nations as well, we're seeing a lot of health care being delivered in rural communities, in places where traditionally patients would have had zero access to any kind of health professional. Now you've got, uh, you know, simple camera phones or in some places smartphones that have cameras that have the built-in technologies and attachments that you can attach to really de to, to deliver uh, very fundamental but very important care in these areas. So what's exciting is to see the, the variety of uh, research that's going on as well as developments in the mobile health space. And I think for, um, for both pharma and for physicians, they need to be aware of these things because ultimately this is what's going to improve uh, population health management and it's certainly going to improve disease management overall. And finally, what do you think the relationship between pharma and physicians will look like in the future? I think it's going to uh, continue to evolve where uh, right now there's been a lot of scrutiny about, you know, pharmaceutical marketing practices, for instance. It seems like every few months or so uh, there's a story that comes up where um, there was a pharmaceutical company trying to promote their drug, for instance, for off-label use or, or doing something that's either of questionable ethics or, you know, questionable marketing practices. And I think just in the recent, you know, five, ten years as these stories have come up, uh, particularly here, it's caused greater distrust in the physician community. And so I think part of what's going to happen in the future is sort of rebuilding that trust and showing the physicians that, you know, we're not just out to make a profit and to have a product that we can sell, but we're really devoted to improving public health. We're really devoted to uh, bridging gaps in where there's disparities in health care. So I think that's part of the relationship that's going to evolve as they start to collaborate and partner on efforts that are not really just driven to improve the bottom line, but that are really uh, designed to improve uh, social health care and population health management. I think the other big area is going to be in how they use technology to provide that kind of info to provide important information to to busy physicians who have who already have a hard time keeping up with the latest information particularly around you know new drugs, new mechanisms of action, uh, new warnings and alerts. So as things like the REMS program uh, continues to uh, influence other uh, disease states and you know products and, and drugs, and we see a greater focus on drug safety and adverse event reporting, I think just leveraging communication technologies to facilitate that process, to disseminate uh, important warnings and alerts to busy doctors, to let them have access to information that's going to be most relevant to them so that they're not bothered by the traditional marketing, if you will, that they don't feel that they need because they already know, you know certain aspects of a new product, but perhaps there's something that they don't know. Well, you know, just deliver to me what I don't know. Um, I think tools and technology will really be able to facilitate that, and I, I find that you know, the communication and the way that they interact will evolve as, as really that kind of technology and communication gets smarter. Uh, so you know, we, we live in an era today where much of what we get is tailored to us, uh, whether we're shopping on a website like an Amazon and we start shopping and it, it learns what we need and then it starts recommending products. In the same way, I think, as physicians start um, filling out certain profiles, the system will ultimately learn that, hey, you're a community-based doctor, so you probably need to know these things, versus, hey, you're an academically-based researcher, so you need to know these other things. And, and I think the system will get smarter that way. And, and I find that the relationship uh, ultimately will evolve to be more tailored and more relevant based on who you are and what, you, what kind of practice you have. Thank you, Joe. It's been great speaking with you today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure to be here.